Science says trigger warnings don't work. It's good to know, isn't it? This is from Slate.com, so a very left-wing outlet, and even they say, yes, okay, fine, it looks like this study shows that they're not worth it. Because they're not. This, in fact, confirms everything that these sort of anti-SJW types have been saying for years. The evidence suggests that they might actually help, uh, might actually hurt, and in fact do not help in any way, shape, or form. If anything, they are the problem. Slate, in fact, declared 2013 to be the year of the trigger warning, which just goes to show you how well this has aged. And uh, the opponents of trigger warnings tend to argue that they are a necessary concession that only serves to further coddle already sheltered college students. This author couldn't believe it. Well, like, no way. I can't believe protecting people, insulating people from things that happen to them is a way of preventing them from being able to deal with further things that go on to happen to them. None of this is going to come as a surprise when I read it, but please try and act shocked. This guy put out a, pu a paper called Trigger Warning, Empirical Evidence Ahead. They had a huge few hundred participants read several passages, some of which were potentially disturbing. Half received no heads up before the passages. Half got a label, 50, uh, a label ahead of the iffy ones that said... Trigger warning, the passage you are about to read contains disturbing content and may trigger an anxiety response, especially in those who have a history of trauma. The results suggested that trigger warnings could actually help generate anxiety, thus making them counterproductive. No way. Hey, by the way, there's a scary thing. Prepare to be scared. I can't believe that that's the case. I can't believe that what we've been saying all of these years turns out to be true. However, this study was generally dismissed because it included people who hadn't experienced trauma. So he did another one that did include only people who had experienced trauma. And uh, the trigger warning still failed to lessen the emotional distress from reading a passage. The authors, authors also found evidence they wrote that trigger warnings counter-therapeutically reinforce survivors' view of their trauma as central to their identity. Again, I mean, obviously not word for word like that, but that's what we've been saying. You internalize that you're a victim and it becomes a part of you. You are a victim. That's how you see yourself. You are no longer like an autonomous, self-confident adult. You are a victim. You need other people in which to survive. You, de you depend on their emotional uh, support for your own survival, and if you don't get it, you can't deal with things on your own. Even the evidence on whether people actually avoid material based on trigger warnings is mixed. It could be that most, most people who have, seen, who have been through trauma see trigger warnings and plow ahead regardless. So they're not even stopping people from reading this triggering stuff. They're just triggering them even more. And even if they were to avoid it, it's not even a good thing. They've finally started listening to Jordan Peterson, I suppose. Cognitive avoidance is really counterproductive, psychologist Darby Saxby told a Slate journalist. Um, I know this extremely well from my days avoiding public speaking. Having, a, having an anxious reaction and living to tell the tale is actually an important part of learning to live with one's brain. It's exactly what we've been saying. You learn to deal with it. You learn to be stronger. That's not to say people who have experienced trauma should be left on their own to have panicked response and get over it. No, but we should be encouraging them to manage and deal with these things rather than running away from them. It's really not that hard. Like, it's, I mean, generally I would call it being an adult. That's what generations past would have described it as just being an adult. And I think that we can too. But uh, rather than issuing trigger warnings, universities can best serve students by facilitating access to effective and pr proven treatments for PTSD and other mental health problems. Oh, trust me, they're not going to get PTSD if you just say, you know what, man up, basically. So this author's last denial of this study was, could trigger warnings simply be important because they signal that you're in a space where your feelings and mental health needs are going to be respected and taken seriously? Well, even if they are, part of taking them seriously is not excessively triggering people, which it seems that the trigger warnings are doing anyway by the na by nature of their existence. So even if that was the case, you still wouldn't use trigger warnings for that, which is instantly what the guy did the study did. Making, making a statement to that effect sends the same signal. Also, the trigger warnings are triggering people. <laughs> there are other problems with trigger warnings that can be identified using postmodernism. Even if they did work, how would we go about issuing them for all possible triggers? Well, that's a good question, because... Anything could be a trigger, surely. You're just doing common ones that are kind of meme-ish. Like, you know, I, I'm triggered by rape, or I'm triggered by murder, or I'm triggered by whatever. Like, obvious ones that are, you know, bad. But, like, it could be absolutely anything, as you say here. So, what difference does it make? You may as well just not have them. They, seemed, they seem to have been negative all around. 
They create a negative opinion of people who think that they're a bad idea. They don't seem to be helping anyone, and they're not a good way of transmitting that this is a safe space. So what else? Trigger warnings may have been developed under incredibly well-meaning pretenses, but have now they have now failed to prove useful in study after study. Yes, but we did tell you. Like, the, the, the continual softening of the youth of the West is not good. And I realise that this comes from, like, motherly instincts, a very feminine sort of way of dealing with any problem, is to say, well, we'll just have it so you don't have to deal with that problem. But life doesn't work that way. You do have to deal with problems. You have to experience the rough part of life. That's just life, frankly. It's bad for you if you don't. You become weak, you become infantilized. It just doesn't help you, and it doesn't help everyone else to have to be excessively um, considerate of you. You know, like treating you as if you were a baby or is to be guided through the world. That can't go on forever, and obviously it won't.